And once you've decided that you might go mobile first, you need to start thinking about content that's actually going to work on that format and be engaging. So what I really want to talk about here is the way in which that content's created and how you're going to optimize it for the particular device size, especially that smaller screen. And this is why we really talk to people about video. It works brilliantly here. And you should be really excited about getting interactive video on the mobile in the future as well. Right now, think about the visualizations that we create. They're big, bold, and beautiful. The other thing which is great about them is that they're audio visual. People process audio and visual elements on two different channels of their brain, meaning that we're not only getting an audio memory, but also we're getting a visual one as well. And that's really gonna enhance the recall and make the videos even more powerful. The psychology of the videos is amazingly elegant. A short two to three minutes coming from the subject matter experts and the non-scripted elements, meaning that they're going to get the passionate tone and the intonation, as well as the speed of delivery that you get from passionate conversational individuals. All of it combines to make the learning engaging, effective and everlasting. So if you've made the decision to go mobile first and you're thinking about the way in which you deliver the content to your people, you need to think about the actual creation of great content and how to make them into true bite-sized videos. What's been amazing with some of our clients is that when we've passed these skills on to those organisations, and this is something we do a lot of now, and when we deliver things like the storytelling workshops with key groups of people, what we see is that they start to define new ways of actually creating their own videos and new ideas coming out of these as well. In one scenario, we worked with an organisation to create these deconstructions. What you're actually seeing is the scenario play out in front of you, and a knowledgeable expert then comes onto the screen and tells you what went well, that's what didn't go so well in that particular scenario. What's really happening here, more often than not, is actually the celebration of success. This is a key element of what normally doesn't happen in traditionally learning. Normally, learning and development just unhelpfully says, don't do this, don't do that, from which you then have to infer what you should be doing. That's really difficult, because what your brain really wants is to being told, do this, do that, because that's how it's going to model those behaviours. What we're doing is putting a positive reinforcement on it. This is what the person did well in the scenario, and that's why the scenario worked as well. As a result, your brain is not having to work out what it should be doing, it's just being told, do this. And you're getting all that positive energy and all those endorphins flowing, which are going to be really crystallizing and really solidifying that knowledge. In summary, there are lots of reasons why we want to use bite-sized content. If you're coming from the point of view of a mobile first strategy, then it makes sense. But we can also help you think about the way you engage people from a neuropsychological point of view. How the audio-visual really makes a difference. We also want to teach you in a way which means that you're going to be able to take these skills and actually create great content within your own organisation. So when you've decided to move to this bite-sized engaging video content, the next thing you can think about is how you can use it to blend your formal learning.